Hello, uh, this is Dr. Dave Maslach talking about reciprocity.com. The E is written with a three. And in this particular video, I really want to talk to you about what is the difference between undergraduate and graduate school. This is part of my thesis help series. I'm a professor of innovation strategy and entrepreneurship. And this is a question that I wish I would have known. And some of these answers I wish I would have known before I went into graduate school, just so I have a better picture of what I was getting into. So I thought this was a really interesting thing uh, to, to talk to you and tell you all about what is the difference between undergraduate and graduate school. I think so to a large extent, uh, undergraduate and graduate school or an undergraduate and graduate program in, of some degree is that um, there, there is a large extent that it is just an extension of a graduate school program is just an extension of an undergraduate program. However, there are some really big things or really big differences, um, and I'll get into those in a, in a minute. Um, in, in particular, the, the why I'm suggesting that it's an extension because you're building on knowledge, right? So you can imagine uh, grade one or first grade is an extension of kindergarten, second grade is an extension of first grade, yada, 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 all the way up until you're in graduate school where you're building on this knowledge, right? So that's the idea behind science. I consider myself a social scientist and that's the idea behind it is that you're just building on knowledge on top of everything else until you have this big body of knowledge in your brain, right? That uh, that, that is sticking in, the, in your brain right in there. Um, so anyways, and that's what you're trying to do as you're building, as you're going, right? You're building knowledge, you're building a career, a trajectory and moving forward. So that's the general idea of the similarities, but they are vastly different in a lot of different ways. So what are the key differences between undergraduate and graduate school? Uh, the first one I'd like to point out, and I actually have a video on this. Oh, by the way, this is part of my thesis help series where I put out work. Um, if you're interested in getting into graduate school and dealing with stuff and graduate school and becoming a PhD and all that kind of stuff, um, that's what this is about. So every Friday, if you look back every seven days, right, there will be a video about graduate school, all sorts of stuff. So I put one about uncertainty. So this is the first thing that you, the key difference, um, I, th I personally think the key difference between a graduate and an undergraduate program is you're gonna be feeling extremely uncertain in a graduate program. You're not gonna know, it's gonna be a lot more, you're, you're making a stuff up a lot more along the way. So it's really, really self-directed in that you are guiding your research directory. Um, you are trying to figure out what to do. So research directory or tra trajectory is just you're writing stuff that you are investigating something you're going back to when you're in second grade where you have to do a science fair project. And you, your science fair project is you going out and actually investigating something, but you're doing this in a rigorous way. Um, compared to when you're in an undergraduate program, you're taking primarily courses, right? So this is, so, so some graduate programs are primarily course-based, so this would be a master's program. So an MBA, a master's of nursing, any of those kind of things like that. Um, uh, PA for its physician assistants, any of that stuff is very, very course based and there's a, the, the, not really a component of research. Some master's programs have a little component of research where you have to do research for a year, which is actually good to understand what it's like to get into you know, a PhD program, which is really focused on, on doing research. So um, yeah, that's the key thing that you're, the key thing between sort of a, a master's program that's first focused on co course, courses is that you're just going to be learning more knowledge. I think it's truly is an extension of undergraduate program at that point. You're just learning more about a particular area. A research program, which is a master's research program or a PhD, is you're getting out there and you're actually getting your hands dirty and figuring things out that nobody else has explored before. It really is this thing where you're self-directed and you're going back to second grade and you have to go through and sort of investigate things, right? You're kind of being you know, Dora the Explorer and finding things out that nobody else has found. So it's, it's, it's really fun in some ways, but it's really, really uncertain. You don't know what you're doing a lot of ways. So it's really, really um, the research part. And that's, that's, that's everything with a, a graduate program is you are really, you just don't know what you're doing a lot of time. And that's, that's what you have to cope with. So there's a whole bunch of behavioral stuff you have to sort of think about. Um, and, and yeah, I won't go to get too much into that. Um, second thing 
is that the courses that you're taking in a graduate program are way harder than an undergraduate program. Um, and they are particularly in a PhD program. So any PhD program, you can imagine that you know, the courses you're taking are two to three times harder than a undergraduate, one, one undergraduate course, right? So you can imagine that it's basically two to three times a undergraduate course if you're taking a graduate course to some degree. Again, if you're taking a non-research thing, right, an MBA, then um, they're, they're, they're a little bit harder. The courses are a little bit harder, but not substantially harder. But in a PhD program, they're really hard. Um, so you can only take a couple of courses, maybe three courses, and that would be a full course load, three or four courses, and you would feel very overwhelmed um, doing that. Um, the third thing, when you're getting into graduate school, compared to an undergraduate program, so the, in an undergraduate program, there's a lot of status between the professor, um, status difference between the professor and the undergraduate students. You're like, oh, professor so-and-so. It's not that way when you get into a PhD or research program and graduate program, graduate school. You are working um, side by side with your professor and sort of doing research. You're doing much more of an apprentice role. You're trying to figure things out with that professor and trying to explore things with that professor, right? So it's a lot more informal. There is a lot of communication that happens. You're gonna be talking to them. Uh, for me, I became very good friends with my professors. And you know, you end up, you first thing you'll know, which is a strange thing, you actually, most schools, well, you'll talk to your professor by their first name and you call your um, professors. Once you get into a PhD program or a research sort of program, you're gonna be calling your professors by their first names. Um, uh, the fourth thing is that the graduate school is heck of a lot more frustrating than undergraduate. Um, research is really hard and you don't know what you're doing. You'd be really frustrated along the way and you are gonna feel really um, lost and it's really common and it's okay, it's very, very common to get depressed through in a graduate program and to go through those emotions of depression and stuff because you're figuring things out. Nobody else is doing that. Nobody else in the world is doing the thing you're doing when you're in a graduate program. And you have to figure out how to deal with that, right? And so one thing we do know from sociological research, Durkheim is his professor from a long time ago, um, was interested in sort of depression and suicide and all that sort of negative stuff. And uh, he was saying that the sort of less connected you are, you feel to other people, the more um, likely you're gonna feel depressed. And that's clearly what happens with a, a graduate program. So if you can create a surrounding and you can create a, a setting where you feel a lot more comfortable, um, that could really, where you have friends and stuff like that, um, that could really help out your graduate program and graduate experience um, compared to your undergraduate experience. But inevitably, almost everybody goes through that sort of feeling of depression. It truly is. Um, Five, the fifth thing, it's not a partying thing, right? You're with different people, the sort of undergraduate party scene, that kind of dies out relatively quickly. That might happen in, definitely will happen if you do an MBA or kind of a coursework sort of graduate school program. But in a sort of research program, um, within a couple of years, that sort of mentality of, getting smashed all on, on every weekend and doing all that kind of stuff, that really peters out very, very quickly. And you'll find out that it's just not part of the experience. You do, I mean, obviously people do party and all that kind of stuff, but it's less of the experience than when in a undergraduate program. Um, so don't expect that. If you're expecting in graduate school, it's just being an extension of a party, not gonna happen. Um, and uh, we're going to expect you, as professors, we're going to expect you to be start behaving much more sort of responsible um, along the way. And, and I mean, that's just life, right? You're growing up. Uh, sixth thing is it's really collaborative in a lot of ways. You're going to be working a lot more. Graduate school is a lot more collaborative than undergraduate. Um, this is a key difference with uh, an undergrad and graduate school program is really collaborative a lot of ways. Um, but at the same time, you're working a lot on your own. So you're collaborative in the sense you're working on a sort of a group project, a big group project, but you're working on your own a lot. So you just got kind of get kind of get used to that. Um, the seventh thing is that in undergraduate and undergraduate program compared to a graduate program is that people are extremely smart, um, but nobody knows what they're doing, right? So in a graduate program, 
They are extremely smart. Everybody around you has gone through the hurdles, especially if you go to a, a good school. Um, people have gone through all the hurdles to get there. They're smart in undergrad. They're smart in high school. Uh, you know, in general, they're just really smart. But then once they get there, they're, you know, people get lost. And it doesn't matter how smart you are. Um, some people are more productive than others just because they have the sort of behavioral skills. Um, they can get up and do work every single day and be okay with that. And they can work for hours and hours and hours and be okay with that. Um, compared to other people that are really smart and, um, you know, they just can't do, get their work done for whatever reason, right? Um, sixth thing is, or actually, where, where am I? <laughs> oh, seventh, um, eighth thing, bleh, um, eighth thing is that there is grades for um, in undergrad. They matter a heck of a lot. Um, in grad school, they really don't matter a lot. Um, nobody's going to really ask you about your grad. So again, in a sort of coursework, MBA style or a master's of nursing, for example, they do matter. They matter a lot in those sort of situations. But in a, if you're doing research and you're kind of doing the graduate school research program compared to an undergraduate program, um, they don't really matter that much. We don't care about that. What matters is the out output that you have. So what does your research look like? Um, and if you have good grades, then your research is probably going to be good and you could publish a lot along the way. But in general, they're not really correlated that strongly. Um, so we're more worried about whether you can actually do good research and write papers. Um, number nine, and there's going to be a lot more focus on a, um, a lot more focus in graduate school on theory. And you're not going to know what that is just at this moment if you're watching this video. But um, as you move through the process, you're going to understand a little bit more what that is. So if you're in a if you're in an undergraduate program, I'd highly recommend that you take some theory courses to get that feel of what that is. Um, you're probably going to learn a lot, but they're going to be stinking hard uh, compared to other programs and stuff like that. So we that's all we care about in graduate school um, is is theory. Uh, all the other sort of stuff we consider it really fluff, um, and and it you know it really doesn't matter. Um, so that's what we're really very, very concerned about. Um, and the 10th thing that I think is really important, yeah, there we go, 10, right? <laughs> the 10th thing is that it's going to take you a lot longer um, doing any sort of research graduate school program compared to an undergraduate program. An undergraduate program, you, you're guaranteed to do it in four years if you're somewhat of a decent student. Um, if you're taking more than four years, it's like, uh, probably you shouldn't be going to graduate school. So if you take four years, and unless you have, so, so for me, I actually took five years, but that's the way that the program is actually set up. So University of Waterloo, Canada does, um, you know, it's a five-year program, but you work for two and a half years during the program. So it's actually pretty intensive. A anyways, um, I digress. So with the, the sort of a graduate program, it's four years, you're guaranteed four years, you're done, you're out, and you know exactly what it's going to take. Graduate program, particularly with research, um, MBA is really, you know exactly what it's going to take. It's going to be pff, two years or a year or whatever it is, and you're done, right? Because it's coursework. It's just, you're just memorizing more stuff or learning more stuff. Um, but a, a research program, a PhD graduate school, which is traditional, what we think of graduate school, that is, that, that's going to take you a heck of a lot longer you think it's going to take and it's going to cost you a lot more money than you think it's going to take. So make sure you do some great financial planning and thinking through whether this is actually going to be for you. Um, you know, for me, I thought it was going to take four years to get this thing done. I was a really smart kid and all that kind of stuff. You know, I thought that, oh, I'm, you know, I blasted through all this other stuff. Uh, yeah, no, it took me seven years um, and, you know, to get a job and stuff like that. Because you need to get research publications to get a job if you're doing a PhD route. That's the only that's the only way that you get um, a job. And so it took me took me that long to actually get something done. Um, where it was good enough. And so it doesn't matter what field you're in, that's going to be kind of the norm um, is somewhere between anywhere between five to eight years uh, to once you do the research route. So and, and that might be you, you, you do four years or three years, three to four years of a PhD program, and then you go and do postdocs for a couple of years. But generally, by the time you're actually a professor and you're working in that route, um, and you're kind of a really true, or, you know, maybe you are a biotech person, chemistry person, you want to work for Genentech, for example, still going to take you that long um, to get into the postdocs and, and things like that to actually get that done. 
Um, so that's all I wanted to tell you. Those are the key differences between undergraduate and graduate school. There's probably a lot more than I'm, I'm neglecting. Make sure you do give me a thumbs up if you like this. Do appreciate it as well as subscribe to the channel. So that's it. Take care. Have a wonderful day. And I'm really looking forward to seeing you on the next video. Bye.